Hi, my name is Paul Young. If you'd like to just call me Small Paul. I'm 6 feet 10 inches or 209 centimeters. I'd like to draw a picture that I hope you will remember for a long time. In Acts chapter 27, there's a story of the Apostle Paul on a ship. And the ship is wrecked. And they lose everything on the ship except their lives. Now that's wonderful that they didn't lose their lives. But it's still a sad thing when you lose everything. And a person may have eternal life and he doesn't lose it, but he can sure lose a lot of things if he gets into sin. You may say, well, I'm still saved. Yeah, but let me just talk about some things that could be shipwrecked. You could lose in the shipwreck. I'm not talking about necessarily out at sea. You can lose your happiness. The Bible says, whoso keepeth the law, happy is he. Yes, but when David committed a sin, he said, day and night, thy hand was heavy on me. I've gotten some hidings from my mom, and I've gotten some from my dad. And let me tell you, it was not fun. But I've gotten some from the Lord that have lasted longer. You can lose your happiness. They lost everything in the shipwreck. About 135 years ago, there was a lady named Mrs. Spafford who was uh, on, a, on a ship crossing the Atlantic Ocean. And... The ship sank, and she sent a message to her husband. I think he was in America. She said, saved alone. The ship had hit another, uh, collided with another ship, and her three daughters all died in that terrible shipwreck. Now she was saved. She was saved herself. She survived. Yes, but you see, there's more than just having your own life. They lost their three children. A sad thing, about two years before that, this same man, Mr. Spafford, he had lost everything in the Chicago, great Chicago fire. He knew what it was to lose the things of this life. And he wrote a hymn, and the Lord has used it to be a blessing to many people. The man's name was H.G. Spafford, and the song he wrote is, It is well with my soul. He wrote, When peace like a river attends my way, When sorrows like sea billows roll, Whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say it is well, it is well with my soul. Now he knew what it was like to lose things. To lose everything. I'm not suggesting that Mr. Spafford lost his children or his house and his possessions because of his sin. I don't have any evidence of that. But I do know that many times that does happen. The Bible warns over and over again about Blessings we can have if we will obey God. Curses and troubles we'll have if we disobey. The Bible says, if we go in the way of wisdom, her ways are ways of pleasantness and all her paths are peace. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom. Yes, but if we go off out of the right way, we can lose our happiness. We can lose our joy. We can lose our peace. The Bible says all her paths are peace. How about King Saul? King Saul had the Lord's blessing for a while, but then when he disobeyed, you remember, an evil spirit from God troubled him. He lost his peace. Has your peace suffered a shipwreck?
Are you playing with sin? Your, your ship of life, you may lose your, certainly lose your peace, your happiness. There's other things you can lose. You can lose your pleasantness. There are many verses of warning about troubles that come when we disobey. The Lord says in Proverbs 1, Because I have called and you refused. I've stretched out my hand. No man regarded. You've said it not all my counsel with none of my reproof. He says, I also will laugh at your calamity. I'll mock when your fear comes. When your fear comes as desolation and your destruction comes as a whirlwind. When distress and anguish come upon you, then you'll call on me and I won't listen. Boy, that'd be a terrible thing. Have all these troubles and then call out and cannot get help. But you see, there's some warnings. The Bible tells us about things that can be lost. Lose our safety, lose our pleasantness. We can lose our basic needs. The Bible says... The Lord casts away the substance of the wicked. He'll, he takes care of those who serve him. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. But he casts away the substance of the wicked. I've already mentioned how sometimes God will not answer the prayers of those who go their own way. Years ago, I remember my uncle, my dad's brother, was talking to my dad. I was just a boy. I didn't realize that my uncle was flirting with sin. He went with this woman and that woman finally deserted his wife and their 14 children. I used to look up to him because he was a preacher and uh, headed a Christian school, and he seemed so such a man of conviction, and he was. But he was overtaken. He fell into, he followed his own sinful lust with one woman and then another woman. And I remember hearing him tell my dad, he said, I pray, but I don't get my prayers answered. The Bible says, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. It's not that the Lord cannot, cannot hear. It's not that the Lord's hand is too short to help us. The Lord's hand is not short, that it cannot save. His ear is not dull of hearing, that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. You remember King Saul? When he disobeyed in various ways, he asked counsel from God when the Philistines came against him. God would not answer him. Well, that's a terrible thing. Scary. You remember what he did? He turned to uh, someone who had a, uh, an evil spirit. Wanted help. He tried to call, wanted to call Samuel, back from the dead, because Samuel used to uh, give him advice and give him the word of the Lord. God wouldn't listen to Saul. Man, that's getting pretty scary. We can lose our possessions. I'm thinking of a young man right now who's one of my closest friends for a good many years. Recently, he's lost almost all his possessions. It started when he went into sexual sin. He talked someone else into doing it, some other people into doing it. And uh, now he's lost his wife, lost his children. He's lost his house. He's lost almost all his possessions. Well, that's what the Bible says. When people don't put the, when the people of commit sins, particularly sexual sins, uh, lest strangers be filled with thy wealth, and thy labors be in the house of a stranger. It says, poverty and shame shall be to him that refuseth instruction, Proverbs 13, 18. Another place when there's people are just living for themselves instead of serving God, God said, you look for much, 
And lo, it came to little. I blew on it. Now, God can blow a whole lot harder than I, I can. And boy, he can blow away whatever possessions, whatever money we have. He says, I blew on it. He says that in Haggai chapter 1. I'm thinking of somebody else, close friend, dear friend. And yet he's, he could have quite a fortune now if he'd have been able to keep all his money. But because of his sin, he's lost so much. I won't go into the details of why or how. It happens in different ways with different people. But the Bible gives possession, gives uh, warnings about losing our, our possessions. Is that what you've lost in the shipwreck? Because of sin? We can lose our health. About a year ago, I guess, here in Cape Town, I was talking to a man, and he was telling me, he's living, he says, I'm obeying the Lord, I'm not living a wicked life, I'm not living a wild life, I'm not drinking, I'm not committing sexual sins, I'm not, I've not been smoking, and yet I have so many health problems. Why would a godly man like me suffer? He's, he's never been a drunkard. I don't think he's ever smoked. Hasn't been living in sexual sin. In fact, the reason I called him, he was doing some work for me, and he had a reputation for being honest. That's why he's working for me. But as we were driving around in the car, trying to get some uh, parts we needed for something, he was just filled with complaining. Complaining about the speed limit. He says he has to pay about, oh, oh five or 6,000 rand a year. That's almost $1,000 a year in traffic fines. He's complaining about the weather here. Just complaining about one thing after another. Now, the truth of the matter is, uh, here in Cape Town, the speed limits are not unreasonable. They're not low. A lot of places you have much stricter speed limits than here. The truth is, I don't know a city in the world that has nicer weather than Cape Town. I've lived in... I've lived in a number of places that have much more extreme extremes in weather than we have here. We have nice, pleasant weather here. But he's just filled with complaining. And you see that complaining, that discontented attitude eats away at you. And here he has these sicknesses. Should not be a surprise. In the Bible, when they complained, they had a worse judgment than that. God sent a fire and burned them up. Another time when they complained about their food again, God sent fiery snakes, bit the people and killed them. You see, he was a good, a godly man. He loves the Lord. But you see, he's lost something. His health is sort of a shipwreck. Uh, I can think of different people like that. I have an, an, an aunt. I think she loves the Lord. But because of some sins she's committed, different sins that she's just continued in, and I don't think she recognizes some of them as sin. She said she's just been in poor health for many, many years. In fact, she said years ago, she said, I'm older than my mother. Now, of course, no one can be older than his mother. No one can be older than her mother. But what she meant is she felt like an old, feeble old lady because she was so sick. She couldn't get much rest, just a, just a, I don't know, more than an hour or two a night from what she said. You see, there's a lot you could lose, even in this life. In fact, you could lose your life. A person can be saved and yet have his life cut short, his life, his physical life shipwrecked because of his sin. I'll give you some examples. Asa. Was Asa a good man? Not, not, not Asa. Josiah. Josiah. Was he a good man or a wicked man? Well, he was a good man. There was no other king like him that served God and obeyed him with all his heart. Whatever God said. He was careful to obey the law of God. Josiah. But on one occasion, Pharaoh Necho, king of Egypt, came near Asa, king of, excuse me, Josiah, king of Judah, and Josiah wanted to go fight him, go to war with him. And Pharaoh Necho of Egypt said, no, don't fight against me. God has told me to go fight someone else, not fighting against you. 
Josiah went against him anyway, against the word of the Lord. Usually he was so careful to obey, but on this one occasion, he disobeyed. It cost him his life. He was only 39 years old. And the prophet Jeremiah wept and wept because this was the last godly king in Judah, the southern part of Israel. I'm thinking of a young lady. My wife and I knew her for years. She loved the Lord. She served the Lord. She was a help, good example, had a good reputation. But one time, I, she may have gotten angry about some people, but she was out, went too fast in her truck, pickup truck, and lost control and rammed, sideswiped a tree. She didn't realize it, but her back was broken. A lady came out of the house, and the young lady apologized that she had hit the lady's tree. The lady said, are you all right? And she said, I'm okay. And then she suddenly died. Her back was broken, didn't even realize it. Uh, you see, it's an illustration. One sin. One sin like breaking the law and going too fast can cut our life short. There's another man. His name was Adonias. He was in the church. Whether or not he was a genuine Christian, the Bible does, doesn't say. But he and his wife agreed together to tell one lie, and it cut his life short. Hey, I don't want my life to be cut short, shipwrecked, destroyed, and lost because of some stupid sin whether it's the sin of dishonesty, sexual sin, sin of rebellion. But the Bible gives a good many warnings about how our lives can be cut short or how we can live longer if we'll obey. I'll give you another example. We can lose our honor, our reputation. Listen to what the Lord said to Eli, in 1 Samuel 2, verse 30, God says, They that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. If we think the Lord doesn't matter much, the way we live, people are not going to honor us. They that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. And then again, those people who've, li who've been ignored God's warning and gone off into sexual sin. The Lord says, lest you give your honor unto others. Proverbs chapter 5, verse 9. And he says in the next chapter, he says, your reproach, his reproach will not be wiped away. He committed sexual sin. People hear about it. He might repent and have his sins washed clean as white as snow. But do you think everybody's going to forget about what he did? No, his reproach will not be wiped away, the Lord says. Uh, so don't go whine and say, they won't forgive me. You had fair warning. Your reproach will not be wiped away. The Bible says the name of the wicked shall rot. I knew a man, knew him well. I loved him. In fact, I even worked with him some. He had a good ministry. A powerful ministry. Reached many, many people. But then he started playing around with certain sins. And I spoke to him about it a little bit. Wrote him a letter, actually. Didn't have the courage to talk to him about it. And uh, he ignored it. Continued on. He justified it. He used to have such a good reputation. But over the years, his reputation has gone down, down, down. The Bible says, the memory of the just is blessed, but the name of the wicked shall rot. Some people die, and people remember more and more their good deeds. And some people die, people remember more and more. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, I remember that, how he was so dishonest, and how you're so proud, and how he was so selfish. And how he followed his own sexual lust. And how he doesn't care about the feelings of others. The name of the wicked shall rot. His reputation was wrecked. There's something else you can lose. You lose your laughter. When the Lord turned again our captivity, our mouth was filled with laughter. But 
David said, my iniquities are like a heavy burden. They're too heavy for me. Not much laughter, not much joy. You lose your confidence. Remember I told you how Mrs. Spafford said, I'm saved alone. Lost everything else. How the Apostle Paul on the ship, they got to land all right, but everything else was lost. Yeah, it's also possible to lose your confidence. The Bible says, the wicked flee when no man pursueth, but the righteous are bold as a lion. You see, if you're walking to the Lord, you can get guidance. Yes, you go your own stubborn way, you cannot get guidance. I have a good friend, known him for years. Um, he was one of my closest friends for a long time, and he told me one time, he said, I've never been sure I was doing God's will. But you can. You can pray and ask God to lead you in a plain path. But if you're not going to obey the Lord, you can be like Saul who asked for help. But God would not answer it. And then another terrible thing a person can lose is his marriage. I know several people. Some of them were my closest friends. And I thought they had good marriages, two of them in particular. I thought these two have good marriages. They're both gone now. Both, both men, their wives have left them. In both cases, it was, it was, I'm sure there's many faults in the wives. In fact, I know there were. But in both cases, there, there's faults, sexual sin in the men. And they could be forgiven, and I think they have been forgiven. But their marriage was shipwrecked, lost, shattered. You could lose your family, your children. Lot did. Now, Lot was a Christian man. The, the New Testament says he was just. God had declared him righteous. Yes, but he went to live in Sodom, in that wicked place, in his family absorbed some of the wickedness of Sodom. And even when God was going to destroy the city and God was going to save Lot and his family, you remember his wife. It looks like she loved the city so much instead of running away. And the Lord said, don't look back. She looked back. Maybe she loved the stuff she was leaving behind and loved those wicked people she was leaving behind. She looked back in disobedience and she was turned into a pillar of salt. He lost his wife. Well, he had his, two of his family stayed with him. There was daughters. Lost some of his family. They ended up burned up in the city. But two of his daughters were with him. Yes, but he lost them too. They had absorbed the wickedness of Sodom, and they committed. They got their dad drunk when they were living off in a cave, and both of them had illegitimate children by their own father. No godly offspring. He had two children who were also his grandchildren that both fathered wicked, ungodly nations. The people of Moab and the people of Ammon. For centuries, they were bringing trouble to God's people, the people of Israel. And then David. David was a man after God's own heart. But two of his sons rebelled against him. Declared themselves to be king on separate times. And, and Absalom, one of them, tried to kill his own dad. And Eli seems to have been a godly man. But his two sons were wicked. Because his dad would not restrain his sons. Did not discipline his sons properly. Lost his sons. And I know others that have been close to me. People I've loved and known well. And sin, they've allowed sin to come in. They've lost some or all of their children. Uh, by, now, sometimes, they, uh, sometimes children die because of the sins of their parents. It says that very clearly in Hosea. And uh, I'm not suggesting that all children who die, die because of the sins of their parents. We ourselves have lost a child. As far as I know, it was not our sin. I wonder sometimes if it's something I should have done or didn't do. That our little cherished died prematurely. 
almost three years of age. But the Bible gives warnings. And I've known people who've been good, close friends, and they've gone into sin, clear sin, and now their children are wi living wicked lives, just completely turned their back on the Bible and the, and the way, of, uh, way of obedience. People lose their assurance of salvation. See, how do you know if you're saved? And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar. They lose their victory. Now, who is the strongest man? Well, one of the strongest men in the Bible was Samson. He overcame the enemies of God, the enemies of Israel, by the Spirit of God. But because of his sin with this Philistine woman, he lost the victory. They came and captured him, bound him up, put out his eyes. I have a close friend who's gone into some sexual sins and pornography. And I don't know if he's still in it or not. But he did, thought he didn't have the, he couldn't overcome it. We can. But when a person is living in sin, he, it blinds his mind. He can lose a successful ministry. And I could list several people I've known personally, besides a good many others I've heard about, who had a good, effective ministry. Now it's shipwrecked. We have authority over Satan, but that can be lost. The Apostle Paul says, I have to, uh, delivered such an one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh. And someone else, he said, I, I've delivered him to Satan so he will learn not to blaspheme. And we can lose our rewards in heaven, the Lord Jesus warned. In Revelation chapter 3, verse 11, he said, hold fast what you have so that no one takes your crown." It's one thing to start off well, but you can lose your lead. Suppose you're running a mile race, and you're doing well, and you're leading, and you're on the third lap, and you come around and begin the fourth lap, and you have a 20-meter 20, 20 lead, and then you get sidetracked, or you stumble. Be careful that, you don't, that no man takes your reward, that you don't lose your lead. In fact, the Bible even warns about sh making shipwreck of the faith. The Lord says in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 19, holding faith in a good conscience, which some, having put away, have made shipwreck concerning the faith. Here's just a simple picture, but I hope you'll remember it for a long time. And you won't go off into sin, Shipwreck your happiness, shipwreck your peace, shipwreck your reputation, your honor, your ministry, your marriage, your family, your children, you don't, so that you cannot get your prayers answered if, as long as you're holding on to sin, lose your health, even lose your life. Let's fear God, keep his commandments. If we'll go in the way of wisdom, the Bible says, happy is the man that findeth wisdom, the man that getteth understanding. Length of days is in her right hand and in her left hand, riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness and all her paths are peace. Let's don't lose it all in a terrible shipwreck of life. Lord, please keep us from evil. You told us to pray. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And Jabez prayed, and that you would keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.